Hey, what's going on? It's Jeff here, and thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Men Unplugged Show. On today's episode, we're going to talk about how to overcome the fear of failure, and through that, how you can rise up strong in faith. Welcome to the Men Unplugged Show. Get ready to plug in and recharge your life, family, and career while igniting your faith in Christ. Now, here's your host and champion of helping men live with passion and purpose, Jeff Jarena. The first thing that I want to talk about is that, yes, we need to acknowledge that fear exists. I mean, let's face it. The fear of failure is a battle that we're all going to face at some point in our lives, whether it was yesterday or, you know, last week, last month, a year ago, or maybe it's today or maybe tomorrow. There's going to be some time in our lives, maybe multiple times, that we're going to have this fear of failure. It's just going to be there. And the more we get out of our comfort zone, the more we do those things that maybe we haven't done as much or we've never done before, that fear of failure is going to even be greater. Okay. It's going to come up faster. It's going to creep up quicker. That's just the way it is. So we need to acknowledge that fear exists. But I do want to say this though, that fear really, if we think about it, I want to give you a quick acronym. It's false expectations appearing real. And what I mean by that is that so many times when we're fearing something, especially the fear of failure, we have these perceived thoughts and oftentimes unrealistic thoughts of things that we think are going to happen, that we make up in our mind, these pictures, illustrations in our mind of, you know, this is what's going to happen if I try this and I don't succeed, then all these things are going to happen. When more times than not, none of that stuff actually ever occurs. But we're actually producing these false expectations in our mind, thinking they're going to be a reality. When reality, again, they never happen. But they're so powerful in our minds that we stop, that we don't push through. So let me just give you some thoughts that I've had at times, and maybe you've had these as well. So here's a thought that we could have. What if I'm not good enough? Or maybe what if I don't have the skill set for this? Or what if I try this and I fail and people make fun of me? Or what if I do that wrong? These false expectations appearing real, this fear of failure keeps us confined into not really living out God's best in our lives. It keeps us in this kind of bubble of fear, this prison of fear where we can't seem to bust through. But I just want to give you an encouraging word here before I move on, is that this fear is just a feeling. It's not a prophetic event for your life. It's not something that's always going to be with you. As long as we trust in God and we push through knowing that he will get us through it. And as long as we're getting back up, even if we fall, think about this. If you fall nine times, but you get back up 10, you've succeeded. And if we're always learning when we're failing or when we think we're failing, as long as we're learning from it and we get better at it, then we've succeeded. And we've turned that failure into something that we can learn from. So the next time, or maybe the next time after that, we actually come out victorious. And so that brings me to this, that we need to embrace God's perspective. I mean, we know this, right? We serve a God who can transform setbacks into setups for victory. He can turn all of our trials, our tribulations, our failures into works of art, into masterpieces, into what? Victorious stories, into extraordinary things that we never could have done on our own. And one of the greatest stories here, I've spoken about on other podcast episodes, and as soon as I say this, and you probably already know who it is right now, it's the story of David. Here's this shepherd boy who turned king. He was attending to his flock, 
He was protecting them from lions, bears. He was feeding them. He was doing all these different things. So he had to multiple times. I'll bet you the first time he faced a lion, he was probably afraid. He was probably afraid of failing, right? Because the ultimate failure there would have been what? Death. But yet he pushed through. He overcame that fear of failure and he did it through what? Courage. Courage being pushing forward in the presence of fear. It's pushing forward in the presence of fear, not in the absence of fear. Because we have no fear, then what? We have no need for courage. So when we push forward, we're actually practicing that virtue of courage. And then what we're doing is we're squashing that fear of failure because we're pushing through. And so that's what David did. He was tired of Goliath bullying everybody around. And David said, you know what? I've had enough. I'm going to go do this through God's power. I'm going to stand up against this giant because nobody else is doing it. And he what? He embraced God's perspective. By doing that, he faced his fear, faced his fear of failure, confronted Goliath. And we know the end of the story, right? The giant went down dead. Guess what? David, victorious, Israel saved. And because David embraced God's perspective, those fears crumbled. And you and I can do the same thing. When we embrace God's perspective, our fears begin to diminish. They vanish. They go away. We break through. We bust through. We crush those fears. Even in the midst of our failures, as long as we're learning from it, as I said earlier in the episode, we're learning from it and we're getting back up, we're trying again, then it's a stepping stone to growth. It's a stepping stone to learning. It's a stepping stone to the ultimate victory. And so with that, I just want to give you some encouraging words here that to not let your failures define you, but rather let them refine you and shape you. And the other thing I want to talk about here is that to overcome our fear of failure, we need to take bold steps forward. We need to continue to push forward. Think about the armor of God in Ephesians 6. All the armor is on the front. It's not on the back. So that means we can't retreat. We can't surrender. We can't turn back. We can't turn away. We got to push forward because that's where the victory is at. That's how we overcome the fear of failures. We push forward. We are taking those bold steps. And I'm sure there's many times in your life that you've taken bold steps already. Now, you may think that these bold steps are maybe small steps, but I will tell you this, that any small step that you take, as long as you're moving forward, as long as you're pushing forward to overcome that fear, overcome that fear of failure, then what's happening is you're actually taking bold steps because every step forward is a bold step. Now, I will be honest here. Sometimes we have to pause. We have to wait for God to get us to the next step. And sometimes, yes, we have to kind of take a step to the left or take a step to the right. But as long as we're always moving, we're always depending on God, then what's going to happen is we're going to overcome those fears of failure every single time. So don't just stay there and remain stagnant, but just think of taking a little step, even if it's a little step. When you take those little steps, Next thing you'll know, you'll start realizing, man, I'm moving. I'm doing something. I'm overcoming this fear. And then you can start taking bigger steps. And remember, God did not create us to cower in fear. He designed you. He created you to be a warrior of Jesus Christ. In fact, Joshua 1.9 commands us to be strong and courageous. For the Lord our God is with us wherever we go. Did you get that? God is with us wherever we go. That means when we have these fears, he's with us in that moment. So we can push forward being strong and courageous, knowing that God is with us and is for us. And he designed us to take those bold steps forward. So with that, I just want to encourage you, it's time to step out boldly, knowing that failure isn't falling down, but it's refusing to get back up. So with all that said, I want to give you some more encouragement and action today. And here's some action steps for you. First, seek God in prayer and ask for his guidance. And then secondly, surround yourself with another brother in Christ. Somebody can hold you accountable. They can actually help you push forward. And third, set realistic goals and take consistent steps toward them. 
Remember, it's progress, not perfection. And if you'd like help in setting realistic goals and taking consistent steps toward them, I can help you with my coaching. All you need to do is go to jeffjarina.com forward slash training, and you can set up a coaching session with me. And the last thing I want to talk about is that we need to embrace our identity in Jesus Christ. Here's the bottom line. Your identity, it isn't rooted in your achievements, your failures, your possessions, your title. It's not rooted in that. It's rooted in Jesus Christ in a life-saving personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what it's rooted in. Romans 8.37 says that we're more than conquerors through Him who loved us. So with that, we can let our failures be a testimony to God's power to transform lives. Our life, number one, and the lives of others. To unleash your full potential at home, work, or even in your community, visit my coaching page at jeffjarina.com forward slash training to set up a coaching session with me. Or if you like, to view some of the other resources that I have that will help you overcome those obstacles, break through those barriers, and destroy those doubts that may be holding you back. And hey, if you'd like to support the Men Unplugged ministry and my efforts to reach others for Jesus Christ, visit our sponsorship page at menunplugged.net forward slash sponsorship. Or you can just reach out to me on the contact page there at menunplugged.net forward slash contact. Thanks again. God bless.